So today we are going to be going through how to create that minimalistic landscape. Now, the first thing that you want to do is start on Pixlr E. That's what I have been using. Um, and then you want to choose your size. I chose Instagram because that is the most common like size to share your art on. And I would really love it if you shared your art. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to pick a horizon line. So using the selector tool that's a square that's up at the top corner by the arrow, you're going to choose where your horizon line is going to be. Um, I'm going to choose to have a little bit more ground than sky. And so I'm going to be creating this little rectangle at the bottom. Now, these two colors, those two circles at the bottom, those ones right there, those when you set the color it will then become the first color on your gradient list right there. So whenever you select it, that's what's going to be created. And that way, when you switch to gradient, it'll always allow you to have the same gradient. Where if you select a different color and then you edit that color, it will you'll have to redo it every time. So what I'm doing here is trying to pick the right style of gradient I want. The further you pull that little wire, so what I'm doing is clicking and dragging my mouse. And I'm using a trackpad on a laptop. So if you're using a Chromebook, you just click and and hold your finger down and drag. The farther down you drag, the more gradiated it'll be. If the shorter it is, the more sharp the gradation will be. So I want to make sure I make a new layer for the sky. This is really important. You always want to make sure you have two layers. One for the... or. You want to have two layers for the ground and the sky because then as you add your other details, you don't have overlap where you have a messy horizon line. It'll always be nice and sheer where that water meets the horizon line. So I'm going to do a pink and teal sky to kind of get a, like a really pretty like baby color. And again, kind of picking the way I wanted to go. I want to have pink at the bottom kind of looking like a sunset. And once I'm happy with that, I'm going to then make another layer and uh, I'm just showing here how if when you're on different layers you can then shut it off. You can redo your bottom layer if you really wanted to. It just gives you a little bit more freedom. So now you're going to want a third layer. This layer is going to be for your first picture or for your first um for your first range of mountains. Now when you're doing mountains, you want to make sure that you have the furthest ones in the back being the lightest colors and then they get darker as they get closer to you. That's called aerial perspective. An aerial perspective is created by water droplets in the air and so everything will get lighter as it gets further away. So it's really important that you make sure that as you start your mountain ranges that you're actually doing um they're, the lightest colors will be furthest away. So right now I, I was poking around and very confused because I couldn't figure out where the polygonal tool was. You have to click on the lasso tool and then up at the top. Those are your selections. That's the only thing about Pixlr that really confuses me is instead of holding down your tools, your other options for your tools are actually up across the top of your page where like your fonts would be in Word. So here um, you want to then be very conscious about how you make Make your mountains. Now, if you're going to be doing more realistic mountains, you want to make sure that maybe they've got a little more jagged edges. If you're kind of making them more stylized, you might um, just do really big peaks and then you can just drag. And then if you double click, it'll automatically continue the loop. So you don't have to worry about it being straight at the bottom there, as you can see, because you can then cover it up with whatever um, with your uh, water layer or your bottom layer. That's why you want to make sure your sky and your ground are on two layers. So now I'm picking what I want my mountains to look like. Now you want to make sure that you are happy with that color before you start. So this might take you a while because what you're going to do for the rest of these mountains is you're just going to make those colors darker and darker as they get closer to the horizon line. And so make sure that you're happy with your color choices at the very beginning. Take your time on this part. At any point in this video, please pause it to like stop and do this yourself. Or if you're just watching it to get the techniques, don't worry about um, following along. Remember, I would much rather it, you just use these tools of gradient and selecting to then make the to, to make the uh, a different, um, more dynamic looking piece that's more original than mine. All right, so now I'm doing my second mountain range. Now these are on a different layer as well. So when you're first starting this, everything is on a new layer. My 
saying is when in doubt, add another layer. Now to choose my colors, I don't do anything with the color scale. All I do is I make that color darker. So I move it over a little bit to the side and a little bit down, making it deeper and darker. And then I go to gradient and it'll automatically be the color that's there as long as you have the first one selected. So it should be automatically up at that gradient scale. When you select those two colors, it should be what is selected. So now, as you can see, I've got my two. I want a third one. So I'm going to add another layer and I'm going to add a third range of mountains to just kind of be the last little piece in the front here. I feel like kind of having an odd number or rule of three is always a good way to kind of keep people interested because it uh, gives more to look at. So here I am putting in this one. Again, when I go to choose my gradient, all I'm going to do is um, ch uh, just make sure that it's uh, the colors are a little bit different or make sure that the colors are a little bit darker. Apparently my layer didn't take that one time. Hmm. Okay, so there I'm moving my gradient, making it darker making it darker, just moving it down, super easy, going back to my gradient tool, and then dragging it down. So now you've got those three color, those three layers, kind of a jaggy looking thing. But now we're going to show you how to create a reflection. So I made my water, I made that to be reflected. And so what I'm going to do is select my mountain ranges, and I'm going to be um, reflecting it. Now, before I can make my mountain range reflect, if you go in and you circle just your mountain range, just on that one layer, it's going to work the same way that Photoshop does. And it's going to just select what's on that layer. And if you do that, you're going to end up only being able to have one layer. So you're going to have to merge your layers. So see how I just have one single layer and you don't want that. You want to make sure that you get all your layers at once so you don't have to repeat yourself. So what you do is you go to the top layer, the one that's on the top. And you see you have the three layers right there. And you right click. So on a mouse pad, that might be a double click. Um, on some computers, it might be control click. Uh, and so, yeah, you make sure that you can double click. And then you're going to go down to the bottom here where it says merge down. And you're going to merge down. And so now, as you can see, and I'm going to zoom in here, I believe, hopefully that actually translated. Yes, it did. You can see those three layers are now one. So now I can then copy and paste this layer. So I either select it. Um, and so I'm going to select it with like a, with the selector tool here, or I can just draw a square around it if I can't get it to select and then I copy and then paste. Now, this is where again, later I found out I, I was having troubles. I tried to go to flip it and I couldn't figure out how to do it. I tried to turn it and I tried a bunch of other things, not realizing that up in the top corner, if you see above my little cursor there, where it shows little flippers, I ended up going and rotating it a bunch but that then doesn't perfectly reflect it. But over on the side, there's these two arrows that are pointing at each other. So to the side of those little flippies that I just had, there's a flip vertically. And so later you're going to actually see me fix my mistake uh, that I made with this project. So I apologize for the confusion. So then what you're going to do is you're going to want to make sure that it's at free form. So if you see up at the top where it's uh, highlighted blue, that's free. You want that to be selected so you can squish it down because when mountains reflect against water, they're going to be a little bit squished because the mountains you're looking at flat, but the water is actually at an angle. And you want to be able to for it to look like it's like stretching up across the water. Then the next thing you want to do is right click and you're going to turn down the opacity of that layer. Um, so whenever you want to change the opacity, all you have to do is go to that section, you right click, and then you can then change the opacity of the layer. What we're going to do now is I'm actually going to show you how to create uh, not like uh, create clouds that are see-through and kind of looking 
like they are low opacity. So the first thing you want to do is use that lasso tool and make sure that it's just at the regular lasso, not the polygonal lasso tool. And you're then going to kind of make a random streak across the sky. I did not use a Wacom tablet for any of this either. I just used my finger across a mouse pad. So don't worry about it. Um, so then you're going to choose your colors of your grading. I just chose kind of a um, one of these, but I went in and I made my orange lighter because I felt like it was a little bit too bright for the picture. And then I go in and I drag it across those clouds that I have and you get this really neat, like cl foggy cloud. And you can always make these lighter too. So here I'm going to do that again and kind of adding multiple layers and, uh, going in and creating that nice, foggy looking cloud effect. I'm going to fast forward here for a little bit so you don't have to keep watching me pluck around at these. So now what I'm going to do here is I um, got a little ahead of myself but one thing you want to do is like finding ways of making interesting effects and so what I just did to create stars is I just chose a small circle and I just pl plucked them around now I'm going to show you how to make a moon now to make a moon all you have to do is make sure that the circle is extra like hard you don't want it to be a soft circle and you can see on the side of Pixlr there's actually a softness you want that at zero and then you want to choose the right size that you want for your moon. So there I have a full moon. And if you're happy with a full moon, then leave it just like that. But if you want to have a crescent moon, all you have to do is go to the eraser. And then remember what the size of your paintbrush was. Because if you're, my paintbrush in this particular case I think was 119. And then I tried to like size it out. But if I just looked at it the first time, I can just type in to the eraser piece 119. And then I would be able to then take it, take it out exactly that. So here I figured it out. And now it's the exact size of my circle. And then I can just click one dot and there I have a crescent moon. And so it's really easy to, and you don't have to worry about trying to draw in your moon. And it's just this really nice, clean looking moon. Now you don't have to make it exactly like that. You can make it a little bit more circular and so you can kind of change it. This is where I actually discovered that I, when I flip it around, look at how I'm like discovering this on screen. In fact, I stopped the camera here. I was like stumped. Like if I keep flipping it, I'm flipping it around. And that's when I figured out that is the reverse. So those two arrows that point at each other in that dotted line, that is actually a vertical flip. And so then you can create that, um, reflection look and so then you want to make sure that you set it to free and then squish it down same as your mountains and then you can go in and make it lower opacity so another thing you can do if you really want to get some other details in is creating a foreground you could add um like creating a beach kind of deal in the front here, or you could have some rocks in the front. You could create some interesting effects using more smoke or clouds. So if I had a beach here, I could put a little fire and a little bit of smoke coming up. How can you add other details to it? You could, um, look up different images or references to kind of create more interest in your piece. But those are just some other tips that I would give you. Just find other ways to make your piece unique. So last thing I want to really remind you is make sure that you go and you look at those references I made you look at. Um, see if there's any cool techniques that you had. Yes, I showed you a specific type of um, design, but at the same time, there's a lot that you can still do with different ideas. There's one other thing that I saw when I was looking at my Pinterest board during this that I remembered I wanted to share with you and that's how to create a multi-level gradient and so we're going to go down and we're going to make a whole new layer and when you have several gradients like this you can replace them or if you just click right at the bottom of a gradient that only has two if you then go in you can then select those little dots and then you can change 
the color. So as you can see, I just created those three colors and then I selected the blue and then I changed it. And I'm going to make a really warm, like hot toned sunset kind of looking thing. So you see it goes from like dark orange and you can then slide them around to really control how much red is showing and how much orange is showing. So the last one I do this really deep purple. Ooh, I think that's such a pretty gradient. And then I go and I can just drag it across the whole page. Now remember the further you grade drag the gradient the more gradual it'll be so I have this on a different layer and there's another plug for why it's really important to have many layers in it see how I put it then at the bottom I can then replace my background at any point so look at that I just finished this and I decided I wanted to change my sky look at how different that made the tone of the image I almost like it better now I turn down the opacity on those clouds to make them blend in a little bit more and I've got myself a finished product so that is our minimalistic landscape like tutorial. I hope you were able to get a lot out of it. Remember, find ways that you can um, teach things yourself, adding details, clouds, stars, waves, ripples. Find other ways to make yours unique, and but don't forget to have fun and make something really cool. You should be proud of your artwork, and you are so talented, and so it shouldn't be too hard to make something that you're proud of. All right, I hope you enjoyed this tutorial, and I will see you next time.